Okay. Hi, beauties. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to the Poetry Project. Welcome to 2023. Welcome to the 49th anniversary of the New Year's Day Marathon. We have not been in this church for this event since January 2020. And it means so much that we're beginning this new year with you here right now. Here being the church, here also being the live stream. I wanna thank everyone, and there are so many everyones who are a part of this event. Um, our 100 plus artists, our 100 plus volunteers who are joining from all over the world to make this event more fully accessible. Uh, with visual description and captioning, the folks who are selling food and books and ushering this space to make sure that we can all safely be here together, um, all of the food and book donors, um, the many, many hands that have touched this event, the board of the Poetry Project, and especially I want to thank um, my five favorite poets, my colleagues, the staff of the Poetry Project. Um, This event is truly a global community effort, um, and it includes you. So thank you for being a part of it. Um, I'm gonna turn things over now to our fabulous, brilliant host of the first hour of the marathon. Please join me in welcoming Eddie Berrigan. Thanks everybody, happy new year. So exciting to be here. All right, first up, Don Yorty is the author of three poetry collections, A Few Swimmers Appear, Poet Laundromat, and Spring Sonnets, and his novel, What Night Forgets. Thank you, Eddie. Wow, this is the first time I was ever on first. I think I'm becoming Barbara Holland here. Um, Happy New Year. Bernadette Mayer, I love you. So uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to be very brief. I'm, I'm going to read three sonnets, and I'm going to first start off with something I wrote when I was 23 and lived in Philadelphia. It's called At the Grave of Walt Whitman. I was in Philadelphia and crossed the bridge to Camden. I'm satisfied, I said. There's grass growing here, and I no longer care what anyone might think of me or what the future holds or when and if comes money. I heard you speak. You are not dead, nor have I lived more than I lived when you first spoke. I kneel down in the grass, light out some blades to chew. I've read you, know your caress, and see out in the void your hand still is trembling for my touch. Walt Whitman, you're the spit green along my lips. Help me to trust in it. And three sonnets. Uh, the first is kind of a, a summer sonnet, sonnet 36. I see how strong a fragile thing can be. Look. A butterfly comes fluttering over its own reflection, hovering out in the middle of a pond, so deep and close you'd think no insect strength could last the distance needed to reach land. Yet up it goes above the wide-mouthed bass that jumps, and death itself waits for it to stick fast, get soggy and drown. Like a visible song singing against all odds in gusts of wind that ought to knock it down, it's carried in every limb beyond the half-sunk log, coming to spread its beating wings and soar, vanishing in the branches on the shore. Now a kind of a city poem, and getting back to Walt Whitman, Sonnet 50. I am singular and we are plural. 
I see us walking on the busy street and waiting for the bus. Each day I meet him, Walt Whitman, whose kind face I see all over the place. Or I am in his brain because I think that poet isn't dead any more than I live. Grass in his stead comes through the sidewalks, cracks. Let it remain unnoticed as the air we breathe. New York City is just a poet's thought, and we are written on the page eternally, living then as well as now. Yet time's short. It's important to talk and say what is. I think of him. I am a thought of his. And one more sonnet, which is kind of for Bernadette. Uh, it's a Bernadette Mayer sonnet. Sonnet 91. Cooking something is like you're saying it, saying just what you think when you make food. I mean, give words to it. Poets are good cooks. Even after her stroke, Bernadette can still bake a chicken, prepare and stick it in the oven, bring it out just right. Phil grills sausage and sets them in our sights, thick, sensual, ready to bite. Who mixed the salad with herbs from the woods and greens chilled and tossed naked with fresh vinaigrette? Who put the bread and cheese here? Bernadette! I cut lemons, my fingers straining seeds, squeeze over ice and vodka, no small feat. Come on, join us if you want to. Let's eat. Andraniki Mattis is a poet who has received fellowships from Cave Canem, Poets House, and the Poetry Project. They earned an MA in Creative Writing and Education from Goldsmith University of London and a BA in Political and Poetic Resistance from Brooklyn College. Happy New Year. I'm going to read a couple poems. Thank you to the Poetry Project. I'm so happy to be here. This is called, In This Room We Share and Call a Bridge. We say so much, buckets of silence pass between us, the highway taunting the night empty, turning and turning, the sky giving fever, ripcord, trees lining the road, this muted landscape pruning my anxiety, a mountain I cannot see. Our argument, the unruly animal sitting in the car with us, we prod with every tangled word. I let the tunnel from my mouth and spit fire, chamomile my eyes with apology, in the candied mausoleum of a kitchen where love is dying, staining everything it touches, tie-dye melting my shirt, somewhere in Bushwick, a land disowning its roots, an obscene engine, I come to you a sorry trick of night, the day hiding its face, a little death in bed with you. Cry, baby, haven't you heard we were made for this? Cry, baby, it's a slow dance, loving you. I open my chest and let you inside. Is there ever a party if I'm always working this skin? If I were your garden, how often would I be tended to? What fruit would I bear? The world is ending and I'm kissing you till my brain blurs a QR code you cannot picture. Rain watercolors the buildings, the sky dressed in amber. I walk into this house called America. Ceilings flaming, walls terribly gray, flakes of asbestos and mold, vinyl floors, tattered nails, needles choking cotton, doors unhinged, windows cloudy with time, waiting for soft hands to make language from a reflection. They said, this is the house you will live in, an abandonment and everyday act of this country and everywhere it wounds. Who are you building this house for? The secret everybody knows, the ice of my eyes melting, transgender in America, an ambitious ritual, they say. 
the weather oppressive, not just the four seasons becoming two, how they envy us with a bullet in a nightclub or a bruised ego put into law. In the shadow of an apocalypse, a room with no clocks, sensory deprivation, my ancestors sitting in a field of sugar cane and cotton. Now I sit in libraries and cafes, the expat dressed in black, my brown eyes blued against this harsh light, black in America, forever staring at the sun, my health a punchline, queerness a quotidian, not a quotient. If I am the only black person at a party, is it still a party or a scene in Get Out? I'm blooming with laughter, jazz under my tongue, a caterpillar opens its wings in front of me. Wouldn't you rather be at home with yourself? I'm tired of clutching the cities for safety, measured as a cylinder, urban planning, spiked benches, being broke a crime, the penalty lead in water. What is my diagnosis today? What drug will you sell me for this? Another black person dies in the news and all I've got is Ativan, Abilify, Benzotropine, Lexapro, Hadol, Seroquel, Clonopin, Lamotrigin, Lithium. When it hurts to be alive, I forget myself. This drag show, tiring. Thank you. This fall, winter, summer, and spring, Philip Marinovich is Wolfman Librarian. Woo! Thanks, Eddie. Love you, friends. Great to be back with you. Myrtle Patch Robe, elegy for Elena Yuka Tarka. I said I'd see you in the lamp around the bend, but I'm hearing you all around me tonight, a gale pounding the house down to pancake, and all of us inside with pancake stage makeup playing the rites of sleep to an empty house of sleeves. With a curtain separating you from yourself, with a blackout curtain separating you from your partner, with window screen mesh filth separating you from separation itself, so you can be one with all things as only the waddling skunk can in his shamble through the tomato patch out back, would washing him in the sink help or bring Yuka back? This is not even going to hit me for a very long time, though it keeps hitting me on the head, a black dress sock stuffed with cold, fresh snow. You, God. The wind crackles all night with its wolves, pine cone chimes, and owls. Yuka, you went out on the storm and the full moon, a true dragon exit and entrance into dragon world. You in Others, this is your soul, wrote Pasternak in Dr. Zhivago. No, Yuka, I didn't read the whole thing. Why am I dawdling, pilfering so many seconds and squandering days on worry, immobility, haze, numbness, depression, spring, darkness? Fuck, I said, when you emailed me, you're dying. I emailed you, fuck, and you said you like that response. We joked in the Zendo a lot, path class Sundays. I said, Yuka Duka, and sorry, and you said, no, that's exactly right. I like it. Yuka Duka. You are beyond all Duka now, and here I am, still writhing around in it, looking for a ruby reward. The only reward is the writhing itself. Happy mudslide to all the alive, including Yuka, who lives in us until we join her, in living in others, as we already do now, I don't realize. Sink encourages crying, Deglo Bob desire, Sink deririm natura lacrime sonata. The tears in all things will not sink, though they will play a music that keeps you balanced on the brink, but Cliff won't let you go over it. No, no, back to work, shoveling snow, magnolia this time. Enjoy your pollination, to die at the beginning of spring like Yuka did, and New York is an animal that separates as much as it smashes us together. Where is the sorting weather? Where is time to together? 
The sink is good for crying, elicits it, water encouragement. The coins in the fountain are cartilage discs. Cartilage does not grow back. That's what it feels like to grieve at the sink for you, Yuka. Okay, for myself, the sobbing sonata, melodramatist, and when I turn the sink off, the words stop coming and gush through the opening and closing of the vents in the silver carrier fish, ferrying the people across the line into dragon time. What vehicle is this? Enough of a rumble coming from it to interrupt my instructions on how to dye eggs for Easter smoke. What happened to my egg? I will break it open now and eat it and go on to the day's second can of coffee. I used to drink it in cups in New York with yucca. We never had coffee together except in the zendo, though I asked if we could. The city separates us with long chainsaws carrying people to and from labor cells. Labor cells. And that's a way to run away and never come back to friendship. Yuka would not let me do that. She wrote to tell me she's dying. The sink is back on. The word tears come, lacrime rerum de natura. The tears rear us in nature to show us we are it. The centipede crawling down the sleeve is an invitation to freeze tag with digits. Yuka must have been great as a kid. I always felt like a kid around her. And when I sat across from her in a dyad once, the whole room blew out open, flaming arrows shooting out of her crown. I don't remember what was said now. But I need a translator. It's my friend, the rusticating rust light bouncing off spilled coffee drops. I will not listen to your recorded talks, Yuka. I am listening to your live ones now, among the smoking daffodils, appliances, Mozart skipping, spinal discs of the sky spying on us as we try to get close for one more hug before this curtain parts us of dandelion fuzz. Here's to Yuka, I raise a glass of iced coffee to you. Yuka died, I found out from Howard at 1.30 a.m., waking from shallow TV movie sleep, the yapping of a Midsummer Night's Dream, the Bergamask scene. I still don't know what a Bergamask is. The whole storm, a great vehicle Yuka is driving away on. The dragons, the dragons, fuck the dragons. Yuka was always real, now that I'm dead. Just press send. Your death will thank you for it. It received the secretion of meaning. Five white cranes on the edge of Duck River. One, two, three, four, a million yucca torca saying hello to my vanity as we laugh together. Wind tassels greeting the bardo elephant, opening his mouth and smiling through tusks. Elena says, take your bardo and shove it up your cardio. We're here to rut. The bordello zendo is open for vogue and strut and love. Yuka was a great joker, trickster valor, pourer of arrow stab wine glamour, to take off on Easter Monday, just after the rumored resurrection. What a fabulous exit and entrance into the heart to bust a fifth chamber into it. Thank you. Jameson Fitzpatrick is the author of Pricks in the Tapestry from Birds LLC 2020. Hello, it's so nice to be here with all of you. Happy New Year. This is after Q Lazarus and some others. Turning around with angels. I got tired of having sides, debated like a mirror or a god's first draft in dirt, a symbol on, cleft, or a hero with as many turns as a poem as long as his long way home. It so happens that I had a dream and in it a gender that was new, and I said to it the dream. Imagine how tired we are. Ten more minutes. And it said, this is more of a comment than a question. And I said, oh no, sir. And he said, all things must pass in the night. 
So I have gone out, a possessed witch, to prove otherwise, with my backup singers, the angels behind me. They are ugly and better than I am, with as many eyes and faces and limbs and wings as they please, great wheels for breaking. Goodbye, horses. I'm over you. Slinking velvet across rooftops, I'm all one skin, like a cat suit. And into the blue I rise, no less a woman than Christ was a crossmaker. Thank you. Lydia Cortez is so happy to be here, where so many stars are born each year. Thank you. Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. Gracias. Not for nothings, but my father worked hard, bit the bullets. There had always been more than one in PR on Delancey, in the Jewish cafeteria swelter to grind the grind, filing down the soul, washing pots, chopping beets, onions y papas, all for his nenes. Us, the three bells of Williamsburg, later Fort Greene, down the block, Pratt instituted, gated, manicured, better than lacquered nails and bullets and bull crap, being held back, the us allowed to live in the beginnings of dilapidated buildings. We could still, we could stare through the Pratt's bars, barely enough, see how others studied we studied them from the outside. We played in open cyclone playground for all when the police athletic league counselors came around in listless long days of apartment suffocation. The PAL gal Noreen was kind and fat, taught us to braid Raffia strands make keychains for papi, imami, chains for ourselves, for the keys around our necks to get in, to get into our apartment when she wasn't home, when she went to the bodega with the three stacked fiambreras of enameled metal to keep the heat in to bring Papi his Saturday rich communion. Arroz con habichuelas, quizás un pedacito de carne, si había. Una vez y dos son tres. Pero nosotros éramos en total cinco en familia. Con un niño un poquito abnormal, but beautiful. Y mami y papi, una vez y dos, éramos tres niños. One, a gorgeosity of a little, long-awaited boy, without words, but full of rocking and finger snapping and swaying, musiquita, las notas invisibles por dentro, como like hidden sharp teeth after they slice through bleeding gums finally allowed to come in. Come in, helped, you are welcomed, like the tough meat we had sometimes, 
not allowed to spit out, despite the gristle, too tough for barely apparent teeth. Thank you. Cliff Feynman tells us, a small exhibit of my paintings and drawings is on exhibit at the Tompkins Square Library until January 13th. Hi, thank you, Edmund. Eddie. Hi. I published my first uh, book of poems in 2021. Uh, it was called Taxi Night. When passengers would get into the cab that I was driving, most usually they would start talking right away into their cell phones. And I would, if it was, I would copy it down into poems. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Like, why the fuck am I drinking? <laughs> so I woke up today and I'm like, I hope I don't get a lot of texts. And he's like, oh, would you like to get dinner tonight? And I'm like, I don't know in stuff. I'll shoot you a draft after school because I don't know what time I'll be free tomorrow. And he's like, okay, so are you free tonight? I didn't answer. He's like, are you having dinner tonight? Question mark. I didn't answer. Text me again. An hour later, I didn't answer. So yeah, like it was just crazy. Um, so like, yeah. He like texts me. If this is too much, just let me know, I'll stop. Dude, I haven't even answered your first question yet. <laughs> and then, I'm so sorry. I'm just not looking for anything new right now. I was really hooking up hardcore with someone this summer for two months, but I can't tell him this. He's like, oh really? Because it seems I heard from other people last night, you are looking for something serious. I was like, fuck, I was so drunk. <laughs> I told him I was looking for something serious, but not with him. Today, I say, I'm not looking for anything serious. So like, oops. <laughs> he was like, what happened? He came all the way from Maryland. He just kept on texting me like nonstop. And I was like, you are fucking annoying. And, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Morgan Vaux blows psychic kisses to the Poetry Project every day right after lunch. Hello. Happy New Year. Uh, I offer a pair of New Year's poems. Uh, the first is about losers. And the second is about lovers. The man I am today, can your strength come from being a loser? The loser son of your idiot father, also a loser, who came from a country of losers, living ominously in a whole world of losers? Are you waiting for a break? There won't be a break. Not one second when things will ever change, when the losers will win. If you find a winner, take a picture, mail it to someone who cares. <laughs> the Roofless Room. Wearing the necklace of silver stars, cold steel stars, laying heavily on my chest. We just finished fucking. When I came, it hurt like taking a step onto a frozen patio. 
When you came, you covered your mouth and started to laugh. Downstairs, there's a pumpkin soup and the uneaten curry. You kiss my nipple when I'm sleeping. Nail thin wind breaks through ancient glass windows, through crackling wall paint, this far down under a leveling spin world, glass that looks like sugar with bubbles in it and waving lines. People are postponed nighttime by staying awake so long on a day without out work, light, water, bed. Happy New Year. Brandon Lorber is a poet, artist, and cartographer. He's the author of If This Is Paradise, Why Are We Still Driving? along with several chapbooks, and most recently, this one-sentence bio. Sheesh. Sheesh. It has been a while, but happy new year, everyone. I think I've lost track of the years. I think it's going to be our best one yet. This is... Uh, this is dedicated to all of us here and to Douglas Rothschild, who, is, who suffered a medical emergency yesterday and I'm told is expected to recover but could use all the healing energy cast his way that we can muster. And is also dedicated again to all of us here. To say... I love you in a poem is surprising because there's nothing more expected. How about what we write what we want to know, like strings in search of a neck to become a guitar on which to reveal how failing to engage the weirdness of love poetry is the first step in to not understanding all poetry or what it is to be in love as the urgent condition to investigate how we can be in anything. I'm told there are states that only exist as a second eye in the middle of your own allows you to notice what you notice, a second eye that both makes life a jewel and is the jewel. Perhaps we could start with why there isn't also love painting or love cooking. I think there may be love dancing, though nobody calls it that, and if you stop to critique the artistry of tantric athleticism, maybe you're putting a little too much Edwin Denby where your mouth is. <laughs> I do enjoy where your mouth takes us as we choreograph the afternoon into a kind of erotic politburo created to propel the microfiber tenderness of a saucy revolution through a private sphere beyond the grip of death. Is that what love is? Yes. And also, a pair of boots slipped on as weekly intimation that if taking the trash out in the winter is worth it, then it all is in service to something beyond ourselves. All the painting and cooking that happened between this house being built years ago and days ago when we moved in. Not that trash night is a jewel, but I'll take it as it is a ritual with you that recalls in miniature a choreographed a corrugated origin story, broken down and bundled from our new home's cold open. Not knowing what to expect means origins must be ongoing, and the myth is that creation's in the past. I want you to be sustained by your crush on what hasn't happened yet, and for me to wink back at the spoilers that pepper in from tomorrow. How can we keep up with our changing anatomy when it keeps changing into costumes from an age that wouldn't exist if we hadn't dressed for it? We can't though the room-to-room -room forensics are inescapably engaging. There are doors and a first time to open each one. I can tell you have been warming your biscuits by the corner by the way our mid-century Valhalla meets Beowulf-era CBGBs of a palace, if not in scale or decor, then in premonition. The way perching on a step stool to get down a snack contains its own uppermost cabinet of our heroic reach. Maybe it's the heroism of one consciousness within another, within a new neighborhood that makes any anything else possible, like if Carrie Bradshaw carried a broadsword, or if the Grinch and Villanelle killed Christmas Eve, a kind of vulnerability that getting metaphysical both hides behind and is the truest expression of. 
Even after a hell of a day in your atelier and me in my lo-fi Versailles, we've got the sentient, unchartable architecture that both places and days find themselves in, and they're in their discovery. Find us too, between a Lacanian power ballad's clinical witchery playlist to slow cook by and the irresistibly slippery banister of a year. This one, made new. Happy New Year, everyone. Dean Ahn is a poet, translator, and performer based in Queens. Hi, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, today, I'll be reading for you an experimental translation of a Korean children's song titled Goyang uh, Ebom, lyrics by Lee Won Soo. Balm of my hometown sings the balm of my hometown. Furrow one, the well done old fragrance of my flesh is a living mountain of bones bleeding with flowers, with lucky peach flowers, fuzzy flesh flowers, real baby azaleas, a crying spell, a fire ritual, a recovering metal petal palace neighborhood. Circle dance one, balm of my hometown, I try to hold on to the grime from my time playing in my body. Furrow two, flower independence, bird independence, peak village, new village, my not yet ancient birthplace, village where, when desire calls from the south of blue, etc., weeping, willows dance in the creek of net songs. Circle dance two, home bomb, a mist becoming inside the morning glow there. Furrow three, my late habitus incense vapes acid marrow flavored in peach, apricot, and honey transmission flower. HD rainbow, a huge vacancy filled with K-pop beauties, a movement of yes. Circle dance three, home balm. Um, to pine for the perfect moment, playing in mind. Furrow four. A botanical garden, a gathering of distances, my former, former hometown. When the wind whistles in from the troubled fields of other place, the community where development buddies rave in streams. Circle dance for balm of my hometown. God, how I long for the springtime I stayed free of labor inside. Thank you. Aldrin Valdez is a bakla writer and visual artist. Hi everyone, uh, it feels really good to be back here. Happy New Year um, and mercy and grace from Mercury Retrograde. Uh, <laughs> Object constancy for Gregory. I knew I wanted to be with you, but couldn't own up to it. My dreams were so on the nose that if a friend had recounted them to me as their dreams, in response, a clip of Lauren Bacall as the witch of the waste in Howl's moving castle. Humbled and porous, shaped like something between a dumpling and a jellyfish tucked in bed. She tells the heroine she cursed at the beginning of the film, you're in love, don't deny it. You've been sighing all day. Then as if heard through an open window, Joe has sighed she's accompanying piano to underscore the obvious truth of it all. Playful, melancholic. This would perhaps not be direct enough for my twiddling heart, brain, to which seat of the soul should I direct this criticism? Do you believe in the soul? In the dreams, it's another song altogether that announces my desire. Melissa Etheridge belting, I want to come over, in red yellow shadows of McDonald's as I inch surreptitiously toward the door. A cartoon cat burglar on my toes, 
knees bouncing high. Even my gestures are angular. Nothing is subtle. You're there just a few meters away. Maybe you don't see me. Does it matter how I escape when the music begins to blare? In fact, there's no buildup at all. The song comes all at once, a flash of knowledge. My feelings broadcasted so, I turn blue in the orange that yellow and red make together. Somehow this is also a painting. Why can't I just speak plainly? What is it I fear I'll lose if I pointed to you, called you awake as your name goes, vigilant, watchful? But it's really me, my eyes darting, looking for you, looking out. There's an arrow in my head. If I pull it loose, will you disappear? Thank you. Jared Daniel Fagan is the author of The Animal of Existence, Black Square Editions, 2022. Happy New Year, everyone. I can tell you I attended the end of songs uh, for Laura Henriksen. Was it there was much night left in us? At farthest gone, that cradle of bomb, shelter embraces, torn the limbs from a ladle constellation, enveloping a long look to post, turn the stars into widows. The rough gum of acacia exuded and cavorting on tongue to tease. Been, but in this night, what could not happen? A night that writes its discipline haven'ts. A night that says its blades too long, we do not say. Lost and let go. Hesitation wounds since being scars. Wishing well, weeping well. The night's famine of artery sores. You can't unwrite pining, brightest indifference. Exhaustible, laid increases. I'm. It was enough the night we were forever ago deep fried to light of oils, of scalds, you weren't. By deep and dim still, to be the distance also. So long belonged, I can say I attended the end of songs when we look upward and sigh the resign of last lightning flashes, the much left in us that was just the hot ash of an opera. Thank you.
Today is, is Ned Risley and Ethan Philbrick. made of you 